Hello guys, welcome back to the third episode of Make Your Own Destiny. Today we're going to discuss about ways to be your competition. Well, we decided not to go very far because we already talked about ways to make money. So we thought about if you're going to start making money, there's going to be competition. And in life, whether it be football, whether it be businesses, whether it be anything in life, there's going to be competition. Whether it be your relationship, there's going to be competition. So what more than us to discuss ways to beat that competition. Tune in till the end of this episode and you'll know some ways of how to beat your competition. I'm with my co-host here today, Musa. Yo, how yo. you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Good. I'm good. Yeah. What do you think about competition, bro? I think in life, everything is competitive, right? Yeah. Whether it's business, whether it's relationship, whether it's, I don't football. know how to say, like football, everything yeah. is competitive and you have to work hard to beat your competition. Because if you're lazy, you're not working, there's someone out there. That's more working, hungry. Yeah, who is hungrier than you, who is working 100 times more than you to be in the same position. And they are willing to do anything it takes to take your spot. So you should be aware of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should always be aware of that. Although also competition is good. Yeah. Sometimes competition is good. Sometimes it's bad because, you know, you can take you out of business. Yeah. You can take your spot. Yeah, and it's good because it makes you better, right? Yeah. It makes you improve. And it, it really motivates you to, to do better. Yeah, yeah, it makes you innovate more. For example, there's a very big competition that's going on right now, right? Competition between Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's better, man? I said it since the who first the episode. Who's the goat? Like, who's the goat? I said it since the first episode, it was Ronaldo. If you guys have not watched the first episode, go tune in the first episode and comment down below who you think is the goat. <laughs> it's Ronaldo. <laughs> I don't want to get this, into this topic because we're not going to finish. Bro. But it's just a simple example. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. You're, you're, I'm not getting I'm you're, not going to talk your about this. Your goat is in Saudi Arabia right now. Making $200 million a year. First yeah, of all, yeah. what do you think about that? Making $200 million. I think he deserves it, you know. I think he deserves it. Yeah, he has had a long career enough right now. He's about to retire. So he's doing like exhibitions, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronaldo, if you're watching this podcast, yeah, keep getting the mola, man. We don't mind having you here as a guest and telling how you make your money. <laughs> yeah. We should get on our, I mean, guest on our podcast. What do you think? We'll get our assistant to email him. Really? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, cool. You never know. Yeah, Sky's yeah. the limit. Yeah, we should try, you know? Yeah. yeah. We should try and fail, but not fail to try. Do you know, that's, uh, that's, I think that's the best thing my dad ever told me. Okay. My dad told me, yeah. try to fail, but don't fail. So ever since then, whatever I do in life, whether it be business, whether it be like anything, yeah, yeah. I just tell myself, try to fail, but don't fail to try. I'll give you a very simple example. When I was young, okay. let's say I wanted something. What I would do is, I'll be so, you know, you know that feeling when you're like, like, you're scared to ask. I tell myself, try to fail, but don't fail to try. Okay. There'll be numerous, numerous times where my dad would be like, no, or my mom would be like, no. But then, end of the day, I'm going to go sleep knowing that I already tried to ask. Because what if I didn't try to ask and she said yes? <laughs> You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's a very good thing. Like, just try to fail and don't fail to try. But even talking about competition, um, we talked about how there's going to be people more hungry than you, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, in the previous episode, we talked about word of the day. Okay. The word of the day was just do it. Just do it, yeah. You know, end of the day, you beat your... I think the number one thing you beat in your competition is just by starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you start, you really beat your competition. I'm not saying you beat it, but like... Obviously, there's two people. As, as he said, there's someone who's more hungry. So whoever's going to be more hungry has already beat the other person. So just do it. Like, what are you going to feel by doing it? Yeah, you should just try. In business, what I believe is there's going to be a lot of times you're going to try to get different sources of income. And I 100% guarantee not all of them are going to work. Of course. Because one, it might not be your type of venture. Yeah, yeah. Two, you didn't do proper research. So you, try, you tried, you failed, but you didn't fail to try, which you, you did a very good thing, to be honest. But what's competition to you like? For me, competition is a very good thing. Yeah. Like, I love competition. Like competition makes me feel better. And actually in business, in, in a free market economy, yeah. there should be competition, right? Because if there's no competition, what happens, right? Yeah. It's gonna be a monopoly, right? If your business has no competition, it's gonna be a monopoly. It's gonna be controlling the entire market. Yeah. Which is a bad thing. Like having a monopoly in a country, it's a very, it's a very bad thing for the economy. We all know the effects of having a monopoly. Like if, if you're an economist, if you have studied economics, 
to understand the effect of, of a monopoly, right? Monopolies, they offer very bad services because yeah. they have no competition. Because they really care. No one to compete with. And they're making the money. Yeah, for example, what's a monopoly in our country? Let, let me, let me, let me find, find a good example. Uh, the electric company. It's a monopoly. You see what happens, right? Yeah. All the time, there, there are like power shortages and no, nobody really cares, right? Yeah. And you have no option. You only have to buy from them. But if you had an option, let's say they do something wrong, and you're not satisfied with the services. You just go somewhere else. You just go somewhere else. So yeah. they would have been more effective. Uh, and in most countries, you know, monopolies are illegal, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah, monopolies are illegal. I like, never knew that, to be honest. If you become a monopoly, they're going to break you. They're going to separate you. They're going to disintegrate you. For example, you cannot have a monopoly in the US. OK. Like, it's totally illegal. Oh, like, I never, like, I never knew that. Well, moving on. Yeah. There's a lyric that I heard from Dave, yeah? This really applies for newly starting businesses or like mm-hmm. an entrepreneur you're getting into something. It says, one eye on my op, two eyes on my friends. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. with my friend, <laughs> with my op, I know like what their intention is, right? I tried to, I'm gonna try to put it in a business perspective. So this is just like a so like a tip. You know when you're starting a business, there's gonna be someone that's already on top, right? Yeah. That's gonna be your op. So regardless, you know their in their end game is to take you out of business. Your friend is gonna be the person that you're seeing starting a business with. For example, Let's say, obviously, we're newly in, we're new in the real estate business. Yeah. For example, there's gonna be the person who's on top, right? That's that's our up, me and you. Yeah. But then, end of the day, I promise you, when you're starting a business, we're gonna we're gonna it will get to a point to a point where me and you're going to meet. Yeah, we could yeah. be friends, we could not be friends, but I feel like they're gonna the, the small business are going to meet, yeah. and you think they're your friend because both of you are trying to get to the top, right? But then, the same person you're calling your friend could be the same person that's trying to take you out of your business yeah. because they're gonna look at it this way. The op is gonna be very hard to find. Okay. okay? It's gonna be very hard to like take out the business. Yeah. But as for your friend, it's gonna be easier because you're small, first of all. And if I take your customers, that makes you two times bigger. Okay. So when you're starting a business, don't just look at everyone seeing that's your friend. Okay. Some people are just trying to take out your business. Moving on, when you talk about competition, first of all you have to know your competitor. Which for me, I consider everyone has competition to be honest. Because if I don't if I me and you, we have competition. Yeah. And competition is what drives us to do better. Because okay. I might look at Musa, let's say, for example, he just flipped a house. I'm going to be very excited for him because that's my brother. So I'm going to be very excited for him. But then I'm going to look at it as motivation. Like, I want to do better than him. Not in a bad way, but then... In a good way. In a good way. Like, you have to support your brothers. Yeah. But then if you don't look at your, your friends as competition, then I think you're doing something wrong. And bear in mind, I'm not saying in a bad way. If you look at your friends as a competition in a very bad way, you're doing something wrong. That's just my advice. Yeah, and talking about competition, uh, it's your competitors, your enemies, right? Yeah. So, yeah, what, what you do is not trying to take each other out of business, right? It's trying to improve, like to level up, driving each other to be better, right? Yeah. For example, like Messi and Ronaldo, they are making each other better, right? Yeah. Like even one day Ronaldo said, Messi makes him better. Yeah, so he is a competition, but they're all trying to level up. Yeah, I think that's the best thing. So competition is a good thing, but you should always know how to beat your competition by getting better. So that's what we're going to talk about today, right? I mean, that's very true. I mean, the very best simple example is just Messi and Ronaldo. Yeah. When Messi, Ronaldo's interview, when we asked about Messi, he says he shared the stage with Messi for a lot of years, and he they're proud because that they don't think something like that could ever happen. That just shows that he appreciates the competition because yeah. if there was no one, as you said, monopoly. If there was just Messi in the world, obviously there will be small players that are trying to get to him, but then it wouldn't be like as much. Yeah. Messi himself says, he was asked about the, the players that he thinks are very good. He didn't, he didn't mention Ronaldo. And then okay. the interviewer asked him, why didn't you mention Ronaldo? And he yeah. said, I put Ronaldo as a great with me. That just shows that competition that drives him to do better. So competition is just like, yeah. it's a good thing, man. Another biggest competition that I know is uh, Coke. But there's Pepsi, right? Yeah. Are you a Coke guy or a Pepsi guy? I don't really like any of them. But I like the <laughs> I like Fanta, so you could say like I'm a, actually I don't know. You're a Miranda guy. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am. So I'd say Pepsi. <laughs> I'd say Pepsi yeah, to be yeah, honest. I, I got you. You're a black Miranda guy. <laughs> so in today's episode, we're gonna discuss how to beat your competition by becoming better than your competition, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's jump in, let's jump in without wasting any time. Um, What's the first way 
to beat the competition? Personally, the way I view competition could be different the way you view competition. But to be honest, when it comes to business perspective, I personally think being your competition first, I think this goes better with newly started business, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be newly started businesses. It could be already been business and relate to it. I would say is following the steps of your competitor. Okay. Why do I say this? If I'm a newly starting business and I'm seeing someone do better, right? Yeah. Before I start, before you start a business, you have to do your research. Okay. When I'm doing my research, I'm going to look at the company, what they're doing right. Okay. Actually, I would look at what they're doing right first of all. Yeah. I'll look at what they're doing wrong, because no one's perfect. Yeah. So they'll be making mistakes, right? Exactly. So even if they'll be making millions, there's some way they're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'll do a proper research on what they're doing wrong. Okay. I'll take that in. I'll say, I'll implement this and this and this to do what they're doing wrong. I'll do it right. Yeah. And then the second thing I'll do to beat him even more is take what they're doing right. Okay. So if I take those two things and I put them together, what am I going to do? I'm going to be, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, obviously I'm going to be making mistakes, but I'll be near, near to perfect. I'll be near to perfection of his company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, true. And if they're making a lot of profit, I'll most likely make more profit than them. Okay. What do you think about that? Do you, what, what, do you, what do you think of my personal view? Mm, I agree. I, I agree with everything that you said. And you said, like, for you to be a competition, you have to follow the steps of your competitor, right? And that's more like you have to know your competitor, right? You have to know who you're competing with. You yeah. have to understand their steps, their moves, everything about them. You have to note them down, right? Yeah. Their strength, their weakness. You can't be someone you don't know. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, as they say, right? So you need to be close to your competition for you to know them so that you can beat them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then after you know them, then you should find your uniqueness, right? Your unique point. I mean, how can you differentiate from them? Where are they doing wrong? What can you improve, right? And then take what they're doing better, do the best, and take their weaknesses also, like improve. Maybe if, if, they are, if they have very poor customer service, then you offer killer customer service. So you have to know your competition to beat your competition. So, yeah. So we're going to highlight like, what we think is the best way to know your competition, right? Okay. It could be to know your competitors' customers. Yeah. So because you're both getting the same, the same business, right? Okay. So if you're doing real estate and I'm doing real estate, we're both looking for tenants. Obviously, it's going to depend on what type of tenants, but then if I'm doing the same thing, I'm going to look at what type of customers you get. Okay. So I'm going to first try do a lot of research on your customers. How can I, where can I get your customers? How can I get your customers? Where, like, everything to do with customers. And then after that, I'm going to figure out what type of relationship do you have with your customers or what type of relationship do you build with your customers? Why would I do that? Once I know how you treat your customers, if it's A1, if it's A2, if it's A3, however, however you treat them, I'm going to try to offer more classes of service. Okay. When you look at these hotels, I think what they do try to do the most, what attracts the most when it comes to customers, I think it's mostly, apart from aesthetics, it's the customer service, the way they decorate their room. So you are, let's say I'm into real estate. Okay. I'm going to look how this Airbnb does their place. Okay. And then I'm going to take that same plan, do it two times better. If they put a painting there, I'm going to try and find a better painting. I'm going to try and see what type of, what type of picture is going to attract people. Because everyone has their own unique touch. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you have to add your own unique touch. Okay. I mean, what's another way do you think you could know your competitor? Mm, yeah, I'll give one example, right? Uh, there's a competition right now between, between Instagram and TikTok, right? Yeah. So TikTok blew up in the yeah. last two years, right? Blew up. COVID. Yeah, yeah. It, it blew up like so big because it had a unique point, right? Which was the reels, right? Yeah. The reels were blowing up blowing up so bad, right? Yeah. And then Mark Zuckerberg was watching. Then they noticed, okay, they have this feature that we don't have. So probably before TikTok grew up, they studied Instagram, right? They noticed, like, okay, what feature does, does Instagram offer, right? They offer long videos, they offer stories, they offer blah, blah, blah. But they don't have reels. They don't have reels. So they introduced reels. They introduced reels and they blew up and they become one of the biggest social media companies, right? And then what did, what did Mark Zuckerberg do? So they made him better, right? They made him think, okay, people write reels, so let me also improve my reels, uh, my reels right? Then they established a section, right, for reels, right? Yeah. yeah, that's what happened. So I don't know if TikTok is gonna thrive. So 
you let us know down in the comment section do you think tiktok will thrive in front of instagram because there are companies that came before right what was it what was it called um i forgot i forgot the periscope name. you know there's yeah. a company was called periscope and it was a very 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 big company because they introduced one thing right on periscope but like back then they came with a very unique feature that you could go live on periscope okay yeah there was no any other social media who that like could go live right and then Mark Zuckerberg came in he saw okay these guys they're blowing up because they have live yeah they have a live feature what did, what did he do he introduced the live feature right and then periscope only offered one feature live they could not develop more features to compete so they went out of business yeah until today there's no periscope right but there's instagram live yeah but there's instagram live there's facebook live so they failed on that yeah and then a few years later here came snapchat so snapchat came as a competitor to instagram right they came with with stories before there were, there were only stories on snapchat and then snapchat blew up because of stories what did mark zuckerberg do okay this guy's on a competition what do they have they have stories Jeez. boom the stories but the owner of snapchat was smart I was like okay okay now they copy my stories right so so i'm gonna copy their features right so he started copying started copying the expo page copy copying the rules yeah <laughs> all the features right yeah. yeah yeah i think that's a good example right to know your competition yeah to study your competition otherwise you're gonna go out of business if you don't innovate i know you're, you're a very young man and probably you're not born during our era where we we're using those nokia because when I was born, Nokia was, was a very big thing. Okay. There was no iPhones, there was no Blackberries. Like Nokia was the talk of the town. They had like all the market share in the world. So it belonged to Nokia, right? And then they were using button phones, right? And then Steve Jobs came in, right? He introduced the iPhone, introduced the screen, the touch screen. It was a very new thing. So Nokia saw the innovation, right? But they couldn't change, right? Mm. So what happened? iPhone took all the market share from Nokia because it's a new thing. Every, everybody liked it, right? But Nokia, they couldn't innovate. They sticked to the old ways. They didn't want to improve. So they went out of business. Yeah. And then later on, they come and notice, oh, this is a feature that is taking us out of the market. Yeah. Now they introduced it, but it was too late. It was too late to go back <laughs> to business. It was too late. It was too late. I mean, talking about Mark Zuckerberg, I think he's very smart, to be honest, because Moving on to my second point, which says, be unique, be relevant, be consistent. So whenever Mark Zuckerberg saw an opportunity, saw a threat to his company, he studied this threat, comes back, becomes unique about it, and then becomes relevant and is consistent with it. Yeah. If, if you're, uh, to be honest, I think if you apply these three touches in your business, yeah. you're going to do better. You're going to do very good. You're going to do better than your competition. Yeah. Because being unique, we talked about understanding your competition, taking the advantage, the, the strength and the weaknesses. Yeah. But if you go and implement the exact same thing, you're going to be copying them, which doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. You have to be unique with what you're, with what you're taking. You might like, you might, you're taking the strength, but you have to add your own unique touch. You know what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say? Like, you have to add your own unique touch. And then being relevant, you can't just take what they, what they did and just put something that's very irrelevant. Like, that's not going to make sense. Yeah. And being consistent, you have to be consistent with whatever you do. Whatever you do in life, you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. Because if you just add a little feature, they're going to come back and look at you and add their own feature. And then if you end like that, you're going to get out of business. Yeah, what do you yeah. think of those three terms? Being unique, being relevant, being consistent. I think you should always be unique. You should always be relevant. And you should always be consistent. And being consistent means you should always be disciplined, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And right now we have been talking about Mark Zuckerberg, right? And it's a good thing. Competition is a good thing. But there are times... You could see your competition. Not every time you have to compete, right? Sometimes you can't compete. You know, okay, this guy has a lot of resources. I can't compete with him, right? For example, Mark Zuckerberg does not compete with everyone, right? And he cannot beat everyone, right? Some people, he joined them. For example, he saw WhatsApp as a competition, right? Yeah. He introduced Messenger, Messenger chat, right? And he expected Messenger to compete with WhatsApp. So but the messenger him. could not compete with WhatsApp. What did he do? He bought him. Yeah, he bought he bought them. So it's like he joined them. Indirectly, he bought them, right? Yeah. He took them. Yeah, yeah. So 
That's another way to take your position I mean, if you have the capital, yeah. take your position by just buying it. And also, guys, as you know, in this podcast, we don't have any sponsor. And we're sharing all this value and information for free. All we ask from you guys is to subscribe, like this video, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any of the future videos because we're going to be dropping videos every single week. Yeah. Um, moving on. This one, you guys might look at it in a different perspective. But... For me, sometimes when it comes to competition, you have to be very dirty when you play the game. Why do I say that? You know, sometimes when someone has been in the business for a very long time, they know the ins and outs, right? So I have most of the connections. So some people will try to use the connections to take your business. And that's a dirty game. So let's say they could pay someone to come ruin your reviews. Like they could just do anything to just take you out of business. How can you play back? You have to be prepared to play the dirty game. Okay. Once you're prepared to play the dirty game, Whoever come plays, come plays dirty with you, you get you play dirty back. Sergio Ramos and Messi. Sergio Ramos plays very dirty with Messi. But look at them now, they're, they're the same team. That's so weird. But yeah, that's just, it's just a little highlight. I don't know why I went there, but yeah. You have, to, you have to be ready to play dirty when it comes to businesses, to be honest. Because it's not every day it's going to be an ethical way to go around your business. Sometimes you have to be a competition by playing dirty. And most of the times this, com- this arises when your competition wants to play dirty with you. That's when you have to play dirty back. You have to do two times dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So another way to beat your competition is by offering unique product or services, right? You should find the services that your competitor does not have. Always, you should seek to innovate, come up with good things, good services for your customers. Yeah, what do you think about that? Bro? Do you know um, when someone's innovative, customers are always going to be interested in what, how, how innovative they can get. So if you have a history of being innovative, yeah. for example, iPhones, right? Yeah. Most customers buy iPhones because of the different features that come. And that's being innovative. Yeah. No one buys an iPhone 14 just because of the iPhone 14. Someone buys it because of the features. Let's say the camera features. That's all because of being what? Being innovative. So once you're innovate, once you're an innovative business, people, customers are going to be very interested in your business. Okay. So that's one, that's one way to look at it. Second way to look at it, being innovative can attract more customers. Okay. When you come, I'm going to go back to my iPhone example. When it comes to taking pictures, right? Yeah. There's, there's Samsung and there's, there's iPhone, right? The two have different features of taking pictures. Someone might buy the other phone just because of the camera features. Yeah. So if it's a brand new phone, they're going to take it. So what? You've, you've attracted new customers. Okay. So being innovative attracts new customers. That's my way of looking at it. I don't know. What about you? Yeah. You should always be innovative. Otherwise, you'll be left behind. So you should always look at a competitor. Look at what they do wrong, what they do right. And keep innovating, keep leveling up. Level up. They say like you have to level up in silence, right? So that your competitors won't know. <laughs> Otherwise, if the competitor knows your moves, then you're out of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're out of business. And most most of the time, it's not really you getting out of the business, right? Because as as I've seen in most of the businesses, right, there's no one company, bro, that can can fulfill the whole market. There's no. Yeah. Like you cannot have a product that fulfills the whole market. The entire market. No matter who you are. There's always space. Yeah, there's always space like for everyone to eat, for everyone to strive, for everyone to, to level up. No matter how many houses you build, there's still gonna be houses needed. Another best way to beat your competition is by knowing your customers. As we we're talking about, you know iPhone, they have obviously new features that attract new customers, but then they put the certain features just to attract the same customers, just okay. to buy their product. Okay. So, you know, most businesses, they don't really analyze their customers. Okay. And if you don't analyze your customers, when you do marketing, your marketing doesn't really get anywhere. Okay. Because when you do marketing, you're, very, you're a marketing expert. When you do marketing, who do you target? You target your, your, the customers that you want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't look at, you wouldn't sell something that's for kids to yeah. older people, right? You wouldn't sell something that's over 18 to under age, right? So when you do marketing, you're going you're gonna to brand it for people who are that age, right? Okay. So that's with, that's, with, that's with businesses as well. So what businesses fail to do is they fail to locate the customer that's going to buy from their businesses. When, and when you fail to do this, when you're doing your marketing, it's not really going to get anywhere. So what you have to do is, Musa is my customer. Musa is going to come buy from me. So when I'm doing my marketing, I'm going to target Musa. So when you're a newly starting business or if you're already in the business, what you could do is do a big homework on marketing. Because marketing is what gets you customers. In the first yeah. episode, I said, you could have a very cheap product but so more because of your marketing and your competition could have a very expensive product but so less because their marketing is not as good as you 
And that's what happens online. Most online businesses know how to do marketing. Hence why you see a lot of people buying it. It could be clothes, it could be anything. And then they can't complain later, but then their marketing was so good to the point where they, you went and bought. So analyze your customers. Know what customers you're going, you're going to sell to. Know who you're going to sell to. After that, when you do your marketing, it's gonna be very easy to get your customers. Because as you said, in every industry, you can never fulfill the whole market, right? And I believe in a business, your aim is not to sell to everyone. The aim of building houses is not for two year olds to come buy from you. You do real estate, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't look at people who are not well established. Are you gonna look at a person who's not financially sta- stable to come in your house? Mm-hmm. No. So you're gonna look at people who are financially stable to come live at your house so that you don't argue with them when you come to rent when it comes to anything. So yeah, I think knowing your customers is a very good way in beating your competition. Because once you know once you know your customers, your competition is your competition is not really gonna look at you and bother you. Coming to a point, right? You talked about marketing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And one of, one of the best ways to, to beat the competition is utilizing marketing, right? Like social media marketing, online marketing, yeah. right? Even some offline marketing, right? For example, let's say I'm selling watches. First of all, I'll look like, okay, what other people are selling watches, right? Where are they located, right? If I know they are located at this place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my shop next to them to start selling watches right there. <laughs> When the customers are going to my competitor, some of them will come to my shop. They will see, okay, I'm selling watches. They will, they want to join, right? Remember, that's free marketing. Remember that guy who is my competition, that that next shop, that next door shop, right? He directs the customers to his shop, right? So I'm getting free traffic <laughs> just because of him. Yeah. Yeah. And this happens a lot, especially here. If you go, let's say, to Kariako, Kariako Market. You'll see, like, people who are selling TVs, they're on the same street. Same street. You'll find, like, hundreds of TV shops on the same yeah. street. Why, why is that? Because they know if you position yourself close to a competition, some people will come to your, your shop. They yeah. will go to the competition. If you, if you are selling cheaper than him, or if you have better quality than him, they will come to your shop. Yeah. Also, online too, right? Let's talk about Google Ads. And sometimes you can go to Google and search keyword, let's say Snapchat, right? When you touch the keyword of Snapchat, you'll see Facebook ad on top. Uh-huh. Why? It means the Facebook marketing team targeted the Snapchat keyword. So that when people are looking for Snapchat, they could also be shown there. Same thing like Airbnb and Booking.com, right? If you go there, search for Airbnb, thing, 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 Airbnb, you'll see Booking.com, you'll see Expedia, you'll see TripAdvisor, like all those companies trying to offer the same services. Yeah. They are positioning themselves to their competitor so that they can get some of that traffic. They know you might be interested because probably they offer better services, they offer cheaper services. Yeah, so you should also utilize social media. Most companies right now, they don't utilize social media. So one of the best ways that you can use to beat your competition is utilizing marketing so well, like online marketing, offline marketing. You should, you should look where your competitor is marketing. You should go right there. And I mean, I think social media is the, is the future. Yeah. It's going to get to a point where everything's sold through social media, to be honest. I mean, where do you, where do you, do you, do you get more customers um, in word of mouth? Or do you get more customers by doing social media ads? You know, for me, uh, uh, I consider social media as word of mouth, too. Because all you need is a message to be spread to as many people as you can, right? And right now, with social media, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy, Like right? With just one click, you can reach 100,000 people. Yeah, so like, it's normal. It's like the tools have developed. It's different from the old times, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it is what it is, no? What's another way that you can effectively take out your competition? So, I mean, another way I think you could be your competition is price. And when I talk about price, I can just look at a very simple example. KFC wings, right? Okay. We're in Tanzania, right? I've seen a lot of of, um, food shops that try to offer the same wings. You know, sometimes I saw a food shop that, that the name was FKC. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, it, I mean, they offer the same wings, but <laughs> you know, just think of it, it's KFC and it's FKC. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered, uh, there's Adidas and there's Adidas. <laughs> oh, Adi, Adi. <laughs> Balenciaga or there's Balenciaga. 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 There's Calvin Klein and there's Kalein Clevin. <laughs> 
very funny. But at the same time, to be honest, they're trying, they're trying to beat the competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really trying to beat competition because, I mean, they are. But at the same time, it's just, it's, just, it's just an example. Look at it, yeah? They offer the same wings at a cheaper price. I mean, honestly, they're still in business. Yeah. So I can't really say that they're, they're, not, they're not getting customers. Yeah. And not everyone... Honest truth is that not everyone can afford their higher quality. Some customers can't afford KFC, right? Yeah, so what yeah. they decide to do is just go to FKC since they offer the same thing. And that goes about in every everything in life. Not everyone can afford what that what your competitors offer you. Yeah. If you offer it at a cheaper price, but as long as you get your profit margin correct, yeah. you're, you're still doing good in business. You're still beating your competition because you could still take his customers and come buy from you because they're going to look at it as you're offering this, your competition is offering this. Yeah. Why should I just come for you to you that's cheaper? Exactly. I mean, honestly, it just makes a lot of sense. It's not really rocket science. If you're offering, because they might be just greedy, put a higher price to just make more money. Whereas, you just put a cheaper price than him and make, make a lot of profit as well by just taking his customers as well. Yeah, like the pricing strategy is a very good strategy to beat your competition. And, and most people use that strategy, right? And for that strategy to be effective, right, you need to make sure, right, your production cost the cost of delivering the service or the product or the product that you're trying to offer yeah. should be lower than your competitor. Because if your cost is higher, it means your price will be higher and yeah. you cannot sell. Let's say we are all selling iPhones, right? Yeah. We all know iPhones are not produced in our country, right? We have to import, right? Yeah. You can import your iPhone from Dubai and come and sell it here. Yeah. I can import my iPhone from China, the U- from the Chinese or from the USA. So it's going to be different, right? And maybe you pay less tax for your iPhone. So, if you do that, it means you're going to sell it for low, right? Yeah. Or, let's say you bought it, where you bought it, you bought it at a very cheap price, right? So, if you're selling the same phone, and I'm offering it for 100,000, and you're offering it for 90,000, just because you bought it from China, yeah, the same quality, people are going to come buy from you, not from me. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So, pricing strategy is a very good thing. And strategy also, the government, government use, use this strategy to protect like the indigenous companies, companies inside, right? Sometimes they offer incentives so that the companies on the inside, the local companies, can sell the same product at a lower cost than the foreign companies. So when the foreign companies come, they'll find like, okay, these people have been given incentives or they're paying less tax. The government can lower tax for local companies. And then companies from abroad can come and they cannot compete because their, their product is very very huge or because they have been taxed more than the locals and then the price will be high our price will be low and then we will beat them <laughs> they can't compete yeah yeah talking talking about price and price is not is not always the factor like to beat your competition yeah sometimes you can have a lower price and still you cannot beat your competition for example Samsung. i know this is, this is a very big battle between Samsung and iphone right most of the Samsung phones are relatively cheaper, cheaper than iPhone, right? But still, people buy iPhone. You know why? Because iPhone have established a very strong brand. If you have a very strong brand and people believe in your brand, like they believe in the region, you know, the lot of people, right? They believe, they love iPhone more than they love their religion. Like iPhone is their religion, right? Because it's a very strong brand. Yeah. They've established themselves as as a very luxury, very classy brand. So, no matter the price, because people believe the brand is very strong, the quality is good, their, their branding is amazing. People will still buy, no matter the price. So, pricing is not always gonna work in beating your competition. If your competitor has a strong brand, people will still buy, no matter the price. <laughs> So one of the ways to beat your competition is establishing a very, very, very strong brand. I mean, yeah, that's, that's very true. And do you know what's so funny is what we say is usually what's being said from the first episode. Yeah. We literally cover this every time. We talked about research. We talked about, um, we talked about planning. And the, what you just said, branding. We also talked about this. Okay. As, a, as a person, you have to brand yourself properly. The, pe- the people, person who brand themselves better, okay. let's say uh, as a small business, yeah. You pitch your idea to someone, like there's two people that pitch their ideas to someone. Yeah. If you brand it yourself properly, your your ideas most likely will be taken 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 in, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. that that goes for everything. As a business, if you brand yourself better than the other business, you're most likely gonna take them out regardless. You're gonna take out your competitor. As I said, just just research on how they brand themselves, 
and two, do it two times better, right? Yeah. That's the same way iPhone does. They try to brand themselves better than Samsung, to be honest. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't know who's winning, but... iPhone's winning. iPhone's winning. Okay, I mean, I have an iPhone. I like iPhones, but yeah, it's the honest truth. Like, do, you, do you know that Apple is the largest company by market cap in the world? Damn. Yeah, yeah. So it's obviously winning. I didn't even know that. There, there's no company which has a, has a higher market cap in the entire world more than iPhone. Like, more than Apple Technologies. Like, it's a top company right now. Mm. I just I just knew that right now to be honest. But moving on, what, what other way do you think you can just beat your competition? What other way do you think you could beat me? Mm. One other way, uh, quality. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can beat my competition by offering higher quality products, right? For example, you're wearing the Manchester United jersey, right? That's that's like very high quality. But there are people here who are offering the same jersey. Same Manchester United jersey, same branding, same Adidas, everything the same, but lower quality. So some people prefer the best quality, yeah. even at a higher price, right? So if you offer like high quality services in a competition, of course, like the customers will come to you first. Yeah, that's one of the best ways to beat a competition, like offering high quality, not quantity, right? It's quality over quantity. Quality over quantity. For example, iPhone. iPhone releases very few phones in a year, right? Yeah. Look at Samsung. There's a lot of phones. Samsung, they are flooding the market with phones. Galaxy Every SJ, single month, Gal- they'll come the, with a new this, product. Yeah. Yeah, Galaxy J, Galaxy X, it's I don't great. know, Galaxy whatever. <laughs> Galaxy X. But they are, they are of very low quality. That's why they cannot beat iPhone. So yeah, we decided today to look at how to beat your competition whether you're just, you're just starting to get in business or you're already in the business but you're, try, you're trying to be your competition. Or to be honest, some of the ways we've said you can just apply it in life. You can just be how, how to be your competition because as we said, competition is everywhere. And there's always going to be competition. There's always going to be someone hungrier than you. So it's just a matter of how you can you be better than the person. Yeah. And, but the, the first step is for you to do it. Try to fail but don't fail to try. I mean, I'm just going to say it right now. That's the word of the day. Yeah. Try to fail, don't fail to try. Exactly. Today, that's, that's how we're going to end it. But yeah. I mean, comment down below what you guys think is another way you can beat your competition. Or what's another way you think you could beat your competition? I mean, we just highlighted a few. Surely there's more ways. And we want to hear from you guys what you guys think. But as we said, guys, this is for free. It's free education. It's not offered anywhere. It's not offered in universities. People pay for this type of education. But we're doing it for free. All we ask from you guys is just like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and wait for us to drop more content. We're going to be here for you guys. Our DMs are open, everything's open. We're my co host here, Musa. We're here for you guys, man. We're all here to grow together. So, yeah, if you think you learned a thing or two, share it to your friend so that you vote. Sharing is caring, so both of you can learn something. So, today we're going to wrap it up here. We hope you guys tune in in the next episode. Peace out. Bye.